When is the best time to plant a fruit tree? Well, if it's not 10 years ago, it's today. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here in the middle of September in 2023. We get a lot of questions from you guys when it comes to how and when to plant fruit trees here in the desert of Arizona. Now, timing is very important, but there's several other things involved when it comes to planting a fruit tree and having the best chance of success. Let's start a little bit with timing. I mentioned we're here in the middle of September. Most of our hot days are behind us at this point here in Arizona. So we're heading into fall and this is a critical time for us when it comes to planting. There are a handful of trees you have to plant now, in my opinion, and trees you can pretty much plant over the next several months. Now today we're gonna to be planting a citrus tree. Now citrus can be planted pretty much year round, but we prefer to plant it now, middle of September, end of September, through about the month of March. We usually give that summertime off just to make sure we're not adding any additional stress. Now there is one big exception to planting in the fall and that is any type of tropical tree. Now tropicals are gonna struggle for us here in the winter time, so planting a tropical, if you're gonna try them, you wouldn't wanna do that now. Definitely wait until spring so that you don't have any additional challenges with any type of tropical tree. Again, at least here in Arizona. So citrus is fine. What you'll also find is now is the time you're gonna to wanna to start pre-ordering any of your bare root trees that you'll be planting during the winter time. You'll see a lot of online websites that will have trees for you. So you'll be able to get those online if you need to go that route. Now, I always talk to you guys about our favorite nurseries. RSI Growers is our go-to nursery for citrus and stone fruit and palm fruit. However, he's a little behind when it comes to some of the citrus, at least right now. So typically I would have you head there because your best bet for a key rootstock is from him. However, a couple of the other local nurseries here are good options as well. The tree you're gonna be seeing us planting today is from Summerwinds Nursery. The key, I think, beyond anything is making sure that you're finding them from a local nursery. That's your best bet at making sure that you get a good rootstock and a tree that is climatized for the area. One other exception when it comes to timing would be loquats. You'll see one of our loquat trees behind me here. What we found is that the month of October is the time to plant loquats. Now you could probably start putting those in the ground now as long as you're not gonna get real hot days. For the most part, now would probably be okay. But October is your key if you're gonna give loquats a shot. We have the area prepped and cleared because we're actually replacing a tree and we have soil that's already essentially built up here for us. Now, one of the things you'll see is that we're not digging a large hole, totally unnecessary. At least if you're using some of the watering systems that we've shown you here, we've shown you how we do our double ring design, which it gives you an inside channel for these young trees like this, allowing us to continue to water our larger trees on this same zone at the same time while giving this plenty of water and developing soil at the same time. Now the tree itself is obviously potted. A couple things you're looking for when it comes to trees. Obviously you wanna have a nice straight trunk whenever you're able to, to find one. You want a nice thick rootstock, one that matches the scion or the regular trunk itself. You wanna clearly be able to see the graft point on the tree, which is where the rootstock meets the known variety or the scion, the tree itself. You wanna make sure that's a nice clean graft with nothing broken or damaged in there. And then of course, a good looking trunk. Now this particular tree is a little tall for our tastes, but we have plenty of space from where the graft point is to where the tree is starting to break. All of this will eventually grow in over the winter and in through the spring and fill in nice and heavy for what we prefer. Now, one other thing about potted trees that you get from nurseries is the tree itself is always planted deep. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that here real quick. I needed to pull out about an inch or so of soil. 
What you're looking for here is what is called the root flare. That's basically where you have the trunk itself. It starts to flare out where the roots are growing underneath the soil. This particular tree, because it was about an inch deep, started to put off some other roots up here. We need to make sure the root crown is either exposed, which is what I would prefer personally, or just below the surface. So in this case, the goal for us is root crown exposed before we plant the tree. Oh. Man, I wish all soil could be like this everywhere. We re-excavated this hole. The hole itself is not much bigger than the pot. One of the things we found here, even with really hard dirt, if you're watering the way we do, it's not really that important that you ex excavate a lot. But you can see right now, we're gonna have a mound one of the reasons why we mound our trees here in Arizona, I know I have a caliche layer, which is a hard stone-like layer that's about two feet down, and these roots are not gonna be able to penetrate it, at least not anytime soon. So I'm gonna be encouraging outward root growth, and I wanna make sure that this tree is well above that caliche layer. So right now, I'm about two to three inches above ground level. You'll see when we get this planted, we're gonna mound this up nice and well. That way it stays away from the caliche layer and is allowed to have those roots grow out. One of the note about roots, this tree was purchased from Summer Winds Nursery. Summer Winds buys their citrus trees from Sunset Nursery. I believe they're out of Yuma, Arizona. These root stocks, again, if you're not getting it from RSI growers, this is a great option for us because they're still Arizona grown root stocks that are designed for our soil. That's what's critical. right angle all right so we have this tree planted now one of the things you'll notice is we did not break apart any of the roots the reason being we don't see any roots that are wrapping around the root ball itself and again these roots are designed for our soil we want them to grow into the soil not stay where we're planting it so we're not amending the soil in the hole like most people do totally unnecessary especially for citrus trees grown on the right rootstock here in Arizona not necessary at all. In fact, it could be detrimental. Plant it into the existing soil. It needs that. Now, if you got the wrong rootstock, you have soil that's not designed for the rootstock, that's a completely different story. But for us here in Arizona, with Arizona-specific rootstocks, especially on citrus, you do not need to mess with the root ball. What you also saw us putting in the hole is a combination of vitamin B1 and fish emulsion. Both of those are watered down into a couple gallons of water. We have that in the bottom of the hole, and we also are gonna be using that as we irrigate initially on this new planting. We're here in the month of September, which is fertilizing season for us here in Arizona. This is an evergreen tree that will grow, get a nice fall flush here over the next month or two, and it should come out of dormancy nice and heavy, and this little bit of fertilizer in the hole is gonna help it do just that. So you'll see how we have this tree planted. It's again, we have the root crown easily showing right here. The top of this mound is about even with this outside ring, which is actually higher than ground level. So we're probably a good three to four inches above ground level with this planting. This is about perfect for us here in Arizona to make sure that root stock is not gonna have any issues with that caliche layer, which I can pretty much guarantee is down there for you. Couple more things to point out. The graft point, when you're planting your trees, at least to the best of your ability, ideally you wanna have the graft point facing north, which is exactly what we did with this tree when we were planting it. That's just to make sure that you don't have direct sunlight on the graft point itself, especially when the tree is young. Now, in addition to that, here in Arizona, it's very critical for us, but really anywhere. Newly planted trees have no way of protecting this trunk from the sun. Now during the winter time, you can get sun scald on the trunk itself. Really any time of year for us here in Arizona, you can get sunburn on the trunk. I can tell you from experience, we've lost trees to sunburn, especially these young ones. Make sure you're painting that trunk or giving it some type of protectant. 
Now we prefer and highly encourage you guys to consider Ivy Organics. This is their three in one plant guard. We use this extensively on the farm. We always use it on our new plantings. Not only does it protect from sunburn and sun scald, it also will protect from certain insects. And most importantly for us, we have rabbits that we will cage to protect against, but eventually this will get uncaged. For the first few years, we make sure that we protect this trunk from our varmints as well. We still have ground squirrels and other things that can get over the cage. So again, this is an organic option for us. It takes care of so many things. A little more expensive than what you would find in the, in the stores, than your big box stores, but in our opinion, it really is your best bet to make sure you're protecting your newly planted tree. If you are gonna give this a shot, be sure to use our discount code, Eon Farm. that's E-O-N-F-A-R-M. Use that at checkout if you're gonna use this. And again, highly encourage you guys to give this a shot. So one other thing and a note on staking trees. You don't want to permanently stake trees really ever if you can avoid it. You want to not stake a tree at all. In fact, we typically don't stake a newly planted tree. Now, the exceptions, this tree is a little bit taller than we prefer and we get heavy winds that come in from either one of these directions. So we have this staked with a couple of stakes. That's the key, double stake it always but you don't want to put four different stakes on here. You want the tree, as you can see in the wind now, you want the tree to still be able to sway and move. That helps the roots solidify in the ground and hold the tree tight. These will only be on this tree for maybe a season, a year at the most. As long as the tree grows really well, these stakes come out and the tree's perfectly fine on its own. This is a Mexican lime. We had a bear's lime in this spot come to find out it was an issue with a disease that is unique to bear's lime. So we're gonna give this one a shot in its place. I get the feeling it's gonna do just fine. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, we talked a little bit about Ivy Organics and their three-in-one plant guard for protecting your trunks. There is a link down below and remember our discount code EON Farm if you're gonna use that to get you 10% off when you check out. So I just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established functioning farms, fruit trees obviously being one of them. If you have any questions or comments, those go in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. They use trees from sunrise, is it sunrise? Pretty sure. It's on the tag somewhere. So they buy their... Yeah. Is you that do? over there? Yeah. And you started talking again. I know. Where's the tag? It's, I threw it on the ground. Oh. There it is, right over there. Oh, you. <laughs> Can't take me anywhere. I know. Sunrise, right? Um, sunset. Sunset. Sunrise, sunset. Well, that's important. Two different times a day. I'm not staying here while that plane circles. These are not planks. This doesn't even count. We good? Push-ups. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs>